What's up guys, Sean here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys some new knives that are in for sharpening, as well as the sharpness, sharpening results on the Medford M48, and some other stuff. So, I always like to start off my videos by showing you guys what I carry today, and I carry two knives today, which are my Spyderco Shaman and z -Wear with my Carta scales this was a sprint run and this was actually my first shaman this is the one that gave me the shaman bug made me completely obsessed and then buy three more shamans so um yeah spider coast shaman is a awesome knife this one is sharpened at 17 degrees per side has a semi-polished edge on it i sharpened this uh about a year ago, this was actually the first knife that I sharpened on the KME when I got that sharpening system. So the stones were not even broken in yet. And this has a, and for that reason, this has a extremely aggressive, very nasty, sticky sharp edge, which is, um, I'm quite happy with it. Now over time and use and stropping maintaining the edge it's smoothed out polished out a lot and it's still it's still really scary sharp so great knife great blade steel love spider coast that's one thing that i have to say about spider coast i have never had a spider coat that i couldn't get insanely sharp all of their um dozens of different blade steels are all heat treated to perfection. You know, none of, they, there's never an issue with their steel. Never a problem with it being too soft or difficulty deburring or not taking a sharp edge. They all get ex extremely sharp. So yes, I, I'm always very happy when I get spider cosin for sharpening because for one, all of them, for the most part, have some type of variation of a leaf-shaped blade, which is relatively easy to sharpen. Plus, I've done so many of them, so it's it's just a lot easier for me to do in a very timely manner. Uh, there's not really too much room for error on them. And the other knife that I carry today, also a spider cup, imagine that. My Gail Bradley 2, I have a Lynch Northwest deep carry clip on this, and this is actually a left-handed para three clip. Now I'm right-handed, so this clip works for uh, perfectly for right-handed people carrying in your right pocket uh, on the Gail Bradley 2. The shape of it fits perfectly with the curves of the scale. Looks really nice, <laughs> knife looks really nice um, works nice it's just a excellent choice for a gail bradley 2 clip and this one is sharpened at i think either 17 or 20 degrees per side and i have polished the washers on this one i replaced the detent with a ceramic detent and modified the detent hole to give this knife more of a solid detent um, and a better action. And I also did a lock bar access modification. I increased the lock bar access with a Dremel and kind of beveled the scale where your thumb goes to slide across there, making it extremely easy to manipulate this. Excellent action, very smooth. And those are all services that I offer. So if you're interested in any of those, hit me up on Instagram, or you can reach me with my email. Uh, if you reach out to me on Instagram, you'll get a response quicker because it's just easier for me to check that. And it's also easier for me to keep track of who's who and put a face with everybody's names and just have all the sharpening and uh, modification work, whatever, all in one spot. So, um, 
Yeah, both of those are ways you can get a hold of me. My email is always linked in the description of the video, as well as products I highly recommend and uh, links to resources that I use that I think might be helpful for you guys or beneficial. So there's, there's all that. Now that I have done a extremely long-winded intro to this video, let's get into the meat and potatoes. So the three knives that I've been promising that I was gonna show you guys for the last couple videos now, I apologize, been crazy busy trying to you know, get all these sharpening jobs sent out so nobody's waiting longer than um, you know, the time I estimated. And the three knives are the Giant Mouse uh, Ace Sonoma, I believe, a Protec Runt, and a Benchmade Bug Out with aftermarket scales. Now, I've said before that I'm not the biggest fan of Protec because a lot of times they have very poor factory edges, they don't come sharp, they are rarely uh, an even symmetrical edge bevel or blade grind for that matter. And there's just a lot of things that I don't care for about them. But I must say, I absolutely love this run. All right, I'm gonna be sad to send this back, especially after I put an edge on it. This thing is extremely snappy. It has a little bit of weight to it, but it's nice because it makes this little tiny knife feel really solid and substantial. You know, there's no play in any direction. Everything's rock solid. Easy to manipulate because it's so, so small. Um, it fires out very hard. Nice kick to it. Awesome knife, comes with a deep carry clip. Really, really love this. As far as the giant mouse goes, there's some things that I do really like, like some things that are impressive to me and some things that are not so impressive to me. So the worst thing about this knife is the flipper and the just the design of deployment. They should have put either a better flipper or added another method of deployment this might be better if you could put some quick studs on it or something, but really the only way that I found that I can deploy it is with my thumb right here instead of my finger. And maybe that's the way it is designed. So I can flick it open like that. If you try to do it with your finger, it's extremely difficult. See, I just got it, but very difficult. So maybe it's not designed to be open that way. The ergonomics are pretty decent. You have a little choil area so you can choke up. There are uh, a, a few sharp areas that are kind of a hot spot, but for the most part, it doesn't feel bad. It just doesn't feel too great. You can see in my palm, there's some red marks that is from this backspacer, I think, and the back of the scale right here, there's definitely some sharp edges. Your lock bar access isn't very good, but you know, it, it's okay. You can make it work. There's nothing really special or very impressive about the action. I mean, it is rock solid and it's smooth, but you know, nothing really excited or exciting. Now, the areas that I do like, what I see so far, is the spine is somewhat crowned, which is very beautiful. I am a sucker for a crowned spine. The way they did their jumping right here is pretty cool. Um, I, I like that they cleared the plunge grind by a lot. So when sharpening this, not gonna have to worry about hitting that plunge grind for many, many sharpenings. 
Seems like it is decently thin behind the edge. Uh, this should take a nice edge and cut very well. So, you know, there's a couple good things about it. Not sure what the price point on this is, but can't say it's one that I would really have any interest in purchasing myself. Now for the bug out. I'm excited to sharpen this because Benchmade's S30V gets insanely sharp, takes a nasty, super sticky, aggressive edge, and it sharpens up well. You know, I haven't ever had a problem sharpening Benchmade's S30V. I've noticed that their S30V also has very good edge retention. Uh, just really not anything uh, that I can complain about as far as that goes. Now, this one is outfitted with some Applied Weapons Technology Scales, which is funny because my bug out is also outfitted with Applied Weapons Technology Scales. But for some reason, this one feels a lot better. It's There's less play, it's nice and smooth, has some grip to it with this milled texture, and it has a little bit more weight as well as being slimmer. So pretty much all the several factors that were kind of holding this back have been major improvements um, with these applied weapons technology scales. So I, I'm assuming this is a newer model. The ones that I have are certainly an upgrade to the Grivery, but there's a little bit more blade play that you can't get rid of. Um, and it's a little bit lighter. Some people might like that. It's still gonna add some rigidity or a lot of rigidity to it, but it just doesn't feel that nice. On the other hand, this feels really, really good. It has, it, it's just, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but these scales for the bug out, I would highly, highly recommend. Um, Apply Weapons Technology, they are doing I mean, they did good work before, but clearly they are doing even better work. And I love seeing small USA companies that are constantly striving to make a better product, make improvements and give the knife community, you know, the things that they want. So um, props to Applied Weapons Technologies. And you can see here, this is what the bug out looks like with a mere polished edge at 15 or 17 degrees per side, somewhere between there. And then this is a stock edge. And I will quickly demonstrate just how nasty sharp Benchmade's S30V gets. And when you accompany with, bleh, can't talk today. When I say accompany by good blade geometry, good cutting geometry, you get zero resistance. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And let's test, let's see if his can cut this. No, so that should give you a little bit of an idea of the difference. Let's check this one. I never do before um, phone book paper tests. So I figured this, since I have it out,
Yeah, so you can see how difficult it is to cut it with that. And uh, I think if any of them will cut it, it'll probably be this one. I felt all these edges. This one feels the best out of the three. All right, so it's not gonna cut it back here. Let's try the middle. Now, close the tip. No. All right, so up near the tip is the sharpest area of this, but clearly all three of these are in need of an edge. Another one that is in for sharpening that surprisingly, with me being such a spider kill fanatic, that I have not, um, that I have not experienced before for some reason, is this Manix 2 Lightweight. I've had a Manix 2, I have a Manix XL, but I've never gone for the Lightweight. I always just figured it would would feel kind of cheap and stuff not really a fan of frn but guys this feels excellent in hand it's solid the action is beautiful the sounds are beautiful love it love it love it i could do this all day very satisfying so i'm super excited to put an edge on this We'll go ahead and try this one. Maximet is known to cut for a long, long time. Now, it's not known to keep it super fine, real sticky, sharp edge for a long time, but it, it keeps its using edge, or yeah, it keeps a using edge or user edge, working edge for a long time. So out of all of them so far, this one did the best. And just for shits and giggles, let's go ahead and try out my two that I carried. This is my Z-Wear Shaman that I last sharpened over a year ago. <laughs> you guys fucking see that? I mean, sorry, I've been trying not to curse. Did you guys see that? Beautiful. This is why it is so, so, so worth it to either invest your time and effort and patience into learning how to sharpen your knives, which I have a whole playlist full of videos that are geared towards helping teach you everything you need to know to be able to learn how to make your knives just as sharp as I do. Um, or send them to a professional to have them sharpened. Let's see here. Beautiful. All righty. And now for the last part of this video, well, not the last, last part, but I wanted to show you guys the results of this so far. Now, this got reprofiled to 20 degrees per side and it is getting a mirror polished edge. At the moment, it is at a semi-polished edge. It is pretty much a mirror, 
but it is a very aggressive mirror and I'm probably gonna suggest that the owner of this knife sticks with where it's at right now because it's very impressive. Beautiful. snag right there All right, so this one might need just a little bit of work, but it is almost there. Um, I will show you guys a quick close-up view of this, and then we will call it a wrap. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. Stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoy the close-up footage, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.